Okay, my friends, study shows how the universe would look if you broke the speed of light, and it's weird because it's impossible. Nothing can go faster than light. It's a rule of physics woven into the very fabric of Einstein's special theory of relativity. The, that's it. You can't go faster than light. Case closed. Okay, it's well understood now that Einstein was wrong. Light can accelerate, light can slow down. Light is totally different than what they thought, and say that that may well involve borrowing from quantum field theory, a combination of concepts from special relativity, quantum mechanics, field theory, and they're going to put all this glob together and try to make new particles. If the physicists are right, the particles of the universe would all have extraordinary properties in extended special relativity. One of the questions raised is whether or not they would ever be able to observe these particles' behavior. Answering this is going to require a lot more time and a lot more scientists. The mere experimental discovery of a new fundamental particle is a feat worthy of the Nobel Prize and feasible in a large team, a large research team, using the latest experimental techniques, says Philip physicist Christoph Terskinski from the University of Warsaw. However, we hope to apply our results to a better understanding of the phenomena of spontaneous symmetry breaking associated with the mass of the Higgs particle and other particles in the standard model, especially in the early universe. This is in classical and quantum gravity. They published this. Now, we did all this stuff, so it's all over. All right, I'm just going to go through this real quick. Done it a thousand times. This is light going through the air, this is light accelerating, this is light dividing and rejoining, this is light slowing down, these are the particles manifesting, this is the raw electron neutrinos crashing in making Higgs fields, this is what CERN and Fermilab see when they crash their stuff. They have all kinds of particles because they're using full protons. We're using coherent light, which is just one frequency of light, red or blue or green. They're using all of them at the same time because they're just smashing big particles together. So they see the different colors. I'm going to look at each one of these a little closer in a second. This is the neutrinos we see in our experiment, the Dirac, which is the black and the white. And here they are down here attached, as you show. Here's where I'm going to show you a little conglomeration. This is what happens in space. The black particles actually leave the white ones and go to the center. The white ones collect around the center. That's a black hole. That happened in space in zero gravity in a vacuum chamber. This is the acceleration phase. Let's take one piece at a time, starting with light propagation. Okay, simple as this. Light's pulsing ahead. The particle is in there. It's crashing into the particles that are in front of it. It glows. Simple as that. This is light accelerating as it f approaches a Venturi, which is a accelerator. It's, it's a very well understood accelerator. And it's pulling this light particle out. Light is almost like, like a, a liquid. Now, this is where at the Venturi, here the black particles separate from the white, and the black have to come around. I have a different shot of this. I think it's better, uh, which would be this one, I suppose. As it accelerates, there's a se several phases of acceleration it goes through here, which are what's called neutrino phases. There's tau, there's, then there's muon, neutrinos, electron neutrinos, Dirac's photons and then at this point they become disassociated with each other and you end up with a black particle and white spray and that I will also show you now this uh, is what CERN sees and Fermilab they just because they're hitting big particles together which have all of these different frequencies of light built into them so they're looking for the tiniest particle we found that and shown that for seven years now. So it's time to look at it a little closer, I would say. Now, this is from Fermilab's particles that I showed you before, or I will. And is the black and the white one? Yes, absolutely. Black and red, black and green, black and blue, whatever they are. But it's always the black attached to one of the other colors. And the other colors are squishy and burny and glowy. And that is what they look like attached together as a photon. Right there, 
the two of those together is what's called a Dirac neutrino. Two Dirac neutrinos together make a photon. A photon has a field around it, right? The photon has a magnetic field completely surrounding it, different than the electron neutrino, Dirac neutrino, whatever you want to call it. I call it just an electron because it does exactly what an electron always did. It's the, it's the pushy part, the burny part. It burns you, it electrocutes you, it's static, it's lightning. It wants to go to ground. What is ground? Ground is black. Our Earth is saturated with dark matter. It has to be. The white particles are, they will right to ground. If you touch a wire, that electricity so desperately wants to get into the ground, it'll go right through you and explode your water molecules. That's what being electrocuted is. Static, right to ground. Lightning, right to ground. Ground is a dark matter attractor. This is just an attractive source. Now, and we could sh I show you this right here. here, here, here. They come back right back together after they break apart. The only reason they broke apart is because of the venture. I think we get free energy from here, but somebody's got to pay attention to it. Nobody does. It's been seven years now. I've tried over and over and over with these people here at Family Lab. They just refuse. Now they got me blocked, so I can't get into that at all. So we sit with no energy and the world is dying. All right, this is the particle manifesting itself, becoming a neutrino here, other neutrino types up here. They have different flavors of neutrino, they call them, like different flavors of ice cream, and they change as they come forward. And then the photon shows up, then these other glowy little buggers show up, which is another form of neutrino, then they explode into the different particle, uh, different the uh, muon and electron neutrino showers. Okay, you saw the red just by itself forcing its way through the air. The reason it's starting to glow is because we were accelerating it. This little tip right here is this little tip right here. Just before it starts to accelerate. Then we, this is after it just broke through the acceleration phase and now that particle has become disassociated from the wave. It's pulling itself out of the wave. It's breaking the speed of light, it's just like breaking the speed of sound. Exact same thing happens with a jet fighter. We are accelerated past the speed of light, not supposed to happen. Here it's separated into fission, and on the other side it created fusion. And in the middle, we see all this glowy combustion, uh, um, illumination. And this is because we're pushing to shoving back. That's the cashmere effect, which creates all this luminosity, which is energy. It's creating very small frequencies, which are, are more, much more powerful than these long frequencies. When they crush together, and in the middle, you get this. Now, not only do we get this as energy, we get this as raw electrons. We have separated the black from the white. Okay, so let's take light in its totality. These are the particles, the smallest particles they've ever seen, fixed and a point particle. Together they form what's called a Dirac neutrino. Now, this also leads to the particles that are in space called the quantum foam. Again, Fermilab. Empty space isn't empty. It's completely packed with this quantum foam. They know that, but they just disregard it. What is quantum foam? It's the particles of light that are moving through space, which are particles, as I will show you. This is their problem. They want to stay with the standard model. Fermilab says no, nothing else exists other than the standard model. It's just not correct. And they, have, they, they cannot move from that square. Okay, here's CERN. Fermilab says the same thing, only Fermilab says the most successful theory in history. This was developed in the 70s. That's 50 years ago. I, know, I was working on this in the 70s. As a matter of fact, I'll show you the stuff I did work on. It, and it, I realized then it didn't work. It, didn't, it had to be dipoles. But anyway, it's the most successful explained almost all experiments. Almost all. It doesn't explain gravity. It doesn't explain what 95% of the universe is. 
It doesn't explain the redshift. It says, oh, everything has to be moving away from us to have the redshift. No, the space is filled with this quantum form. Redshift is just particles slowing down as they approach us. It says, over time, through many experiments, standard model has become established a well-tested physics theory. No, it's not tested. It's just ignored the, the, the problems. Okay, you know, there's a million different ways to do things, but this is what I would recommend to start try. Try to create one of these devices with a solar collector to see if it will harvest additional energy than it was required to create the condition. You don't add any energy here whatsoever. If this took 5 watts and you got 1,000 watts of power here, you got 995 watts of free energy. Now, I'm just saying, the, I'm throwing these figures in, but they say when you separate these two particles, this is a minimum of 200 times more energy when they're separated. That's what they say, 207 actually. All right, I think I mentioned that I was in this right in the beginning. This was early 70s, 1970 actually. In 68, I went in the Army. I was in with uh, service Nike Hercules missiles. I was a 52D20. And um, this is my research on light and um, all of the molecules. And I came up with two types of, there's polar and there's dipole, um, uh, non-polar particles but they're all dipole to dipole. Everything's a dipole, and the transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. This was my final paper on all this stuff, and, and, uh, and I realized they were wrong about everything. I did it all. I went through every little detail that they told us all the figure, man, did this, and do da 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 boo 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 I did everything, energies and chemistry, and, and I discovered that there's nothing that it, it is not. A dipole. There has to be dipoles. They can't be one tiny little negative and one gigantic positive. It just doesn't work. Look, light energy. I did all this stuff. I did as much as anybody on this. And I realized it wasn't right, so I went on my little way in life. Now, I, at my end of my life, I'm realizing I have now all the evidence to support what I said. I just showed you the evidence. And it's rejected by all the people that are supposed to look for evidence, are supposed to examine scientific stuff, won't even spend one minute to even look at it. Not one single institution that I have approached, and I have approached virtually all of them that are making claims.